right, so let's do another example. Predict the molecular geometry and bond angles in ClO2F. So we need to know who's least electronegative. So we've got Cl, O, and F. So least electronegative is over and down. Okay, so Cl is going to go in the middle. So our Cl, an O, an O, and an F. We want to count our electrons. So O has six, Cl and F have seven valence electrons. So one Cl at seven, two O's at six, and one fluorine at seven gives me 26 electrons. I make single bonds, so that's three single bonds, so that's six electrons. So 20 left. Outside in, oxygen has two. He wants eight, so he needs six more. That's the same for the other oxygen. And the fluorine wants eight, has two, so he wants six more. So that's a total of 18 electrons that I just drew on there. Okay, so now I do the chlorine. The chlorine wants eight, he's got six, which means he wants two more. I have two, so I go ahead and put it on the chlorine. So now I've used up all my electrons. I don't have anything left. So then I wanna say, okay, chlorine's got eight, he's happy, but can he be happier? So can chlorine expand? So I look here, chlorine is in row three, which means he can expand. So I need to do some formal charges. So let me do the formal charge on the chlorine. So chlorine has seven valence, okay? How many bonds? One, two, three bonds, and two electrons. So that gives him a plus two. So then I wanna know, well, where can I move electrons from? He would like two, two double bonds, but where can I get it from? So let me do the oxygen and the fluorine. Oxygen has six valence. He has one, two, three, four, five, six on him and one bond. One bond, six valence, so he has a negative one. They both would be the same. Fluorine has seven valence, one bond. And one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So he has a zero formal charge. So the fluorine says, don't mess with me, leave me alone. This oxygen says, I can make one double bond. This oxygen says, I can make one double bond. Fluorine says, I want two. So they're like, let's do it. So we'll make one double bond, one double bond. So we'll get a double bond here, here, he's by himself. And then don't forget those two electrons on the central atom. So that would be my final Lewis Dock picture. So now I need to figure out, well, what is it? What is this picture? So I have one, two, three, four. So I have four electron groups, but in that, they're not all bonds. This is three bonds and one lone pair, okay? So it's a three, one. So I could go back to my table and say, okay, it had four parent groups, so here's the four parent groups, but it was a three bonds and one lone pair, which is trigonal pyramidal, and since it's a deviation of tetrahedral, it's not exactly 109.5, it's less than 109.5. So we go back. So my molecular geometry is going to be trigonal pyramidal, and my bond angles are going to be less than 109.5, okay? So that's how we go through and we figure out the geometry and we figure out the bond angles, and we, that's how we use our Lewis dot picture to figure out our answers using our chart too. All right, now, this is only one central atom. What if I had more than one central atom? So some molecules that have larger structures are gonna have many interior atoms. So we can kind of think about them having multiple central atoms. So when we do this, we wanna think about what is the shape around each of those central atoms. So let's look at this guy. So if you look at this guy, you could consider, well, he's on the outside, 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 but he's central. He's kind of in the middle and he's in the middle. So then you can think about all three of these as being central atoms. 
So then when we talk about the shape, we want to talk about the shape around each one. So this is how we would answer it. We would say, what's the shape around the left carbon? What's the shape around the central carbon or the right carbon? And what's the shape around the oxygen? So what you do is you look at this and say, here's the carbon, how many electron groups? One, two, three, four, four electron groups. They're all bonds, so four electron groups, so this is a four zero, because it's four bonds, no lone pairs. So if I go to my chart, four electron groups, four bonds, zero, so it'd be a four, four, zero, and you would find that this is tetrahedral. All right, then we go here. How many things are on this central atom? We say one, two, three. Three electron groups. They're all bonds. So this is a three electron groups, three bonds, zero. So a three, three, zero, if you're looking at the table. So if you looked at the table for a three, three, zero, this is trigonal planar. So around this carbon, it's trigonal planar. So just look at each one specifically. Then we look at this oxygen. How many groups? One, two, three, four. So four electron groups, but they're not all bonds. So it's not the same thing as this one. Because here, it's two bonds and two lone pairs. So this is a four, two, two. So four electron groups, but two bonds and two lone pairs. So a four, two, two in my table is bent. So this is how we would do, if we, how we would write it and um, notate it if I have multiple uh, central atoms. Okay, and so then here's another example. So here's got four, which we already said, if it's four and four bonds, no lone pairs, this is my tetrahedral. If it's two lone pairs, I mean two bonds and two lone pairs, it's bent. So we would say tetrahedral for the carbon, oxygen is bent. But this is what it actually looks like. So if you notice this tetrahedral, if you looked at just this side of the picture, this is tetrahedral shape. If you looked at this side, it's bent. Now you're not gonna have to ever draw it like this with more than one central atom. But what it is, is you're looking at the central atom and thinking about what that shape is, looking at the other one, thinking about that shape, and then they actually come together. Okay, look at another one. So we can look at all of these. So this nitrogen has one, two, three, four electron groups, three bonds, one lone pair. So this is a four, three, one. So a four, three, one is going to be my trigonal pyramidal, okay? This is the same one we've already done for Four zero tetrahedral. This one we did before with the three three zero trigonal planar. This one's your four, but with two bonds, two lone pairs, the bent. So tetrahedral, trigonal planar, bent. So if I wanted to then draw this, this is what it would kind of look like. This has this trigonal planar, this three kind of uh, bar stool kind of look. This has the tetrahedral two going like this, and then two going out like that. Here's that trigonal planar, makes a triangle. Nobody's going back and forth, just all in the same plane. And then my bent, okay? So that's why we get this structure because we look at every central atom and we think about what is the shape on those central atoms. All right, so on the next lecture, we're gonna practice the molecular geometry, drawing something that has more than one central atom, and then figuring out what the geometries are when there are more than one central atom.